For years, we've made a regular habit of highlighting some of the worst efforts at filmmaking in the history of celluloid, and yet somehow we've never tapped into the treasure trove that is Sid Davis Productions. So for those of you who aren't familiar, Sid Davis was the jack chick of over-the-top scare films for kids. You want a movie where the violations of a (laughs) relatively minor social taboo lead to a child falling off a cliff? You want Sid Davis. You want a dangers of scrapbooking movie that literally includes a girl impaling herself in the face because she ran with scissors? Sid Davis is your guy. Yes. No, yes, really. And today... (laughs) He'll be making his long overdue debut on God Awful Minis. How did we not do the scissors stab in the face? <laughs> it's one? coming. It's, not, it's coming, man. It's not Chris. We, you find a connection. And make it. <laughs> Just dub over it. Jesus. Great. It's on. Yeah, a there you episode. go. All right. So tell us, Heath. We didn't do the scissor one. We actually did even better, though. Like, uh, what will we be breaking down today? <sighs> better, sure. We'll say better. Um, we watched Boys Beware. What's it the story of? Heath, tell us what it's the story it, of. It's the story of, it's a cautionary tale, actually, about the responsible way for young boys to hitchhike with sexual predators. <laughs> sorry, sorry, with homosexuals. I said sexual predators. I meant with homosexuals. Right, That's those are those are going to be synonyms for the purpose of this movie. They will make those literally synonyms. Yep. It's terrifying. And Eli, how bad was this mini? Well, if you love the movies they showed you in Driver's Ed, but you wish they'd been about your teacher's deepest inside thoughts, <laughs> you will love this movie. <laughs> and by the way, Sid Davis also made those movies you saw in Driver's Ed. He also too. made Blood it's, on the Ring. Yeah. Yeah, 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 that was him. It's just a bad sign. If you're in an analogy with Jack Chick, if you're like the yeah, Jack right, Chick of, of yeah, anything, exactly. there's nothing good there. <laughs> so, all right, so the movie starts out, and I got to say, okay, the guy holding the camera during this produced in cooperation with the Englewood Police Department thing. That guy was getting blown at the time, right? Something like that. I said, tells you a lot about the audience based on how long they leave the titles on these bad boys. They were not expecting fast readers. I can tell you that right (laughs) now. And that tripod was definitely nervous about something. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah, no, it was getting blown and it was afraid it was going to get caught. Yeah. (laughs) All right. So we open in a police department where a guy's going to walk to his car for a good 30% of this movie. (laughs) <laughs> yeah, we get like a 15 minute establishing shot to show us this guy walk into his car like like people were freaking out. How did this guy ever get from the building to the car? Oh, walking. OK, got right. It. Okay. Right. Good. Got it. He's there. Yeah. So this is Lieutenant Williams. He's on the way to a high school to give a lecture. So this video, which was primarily played during lectures at high school, is about a guy who's on his way to give a lecture at a fucking high school. Oh, and I I was so hoping I would Google this and find out that it always ended with that guy walking through the door and being like, oh, hello, kids. How'd you enjoy the movie? Yeah, right. Anyways, <laughs> homos. Yeah, right, right. So <laughs> the narrator goes, he drives by a, a group of hitchhiking kids. Like a... Row of 35 kids doing normal hitchhiking. Yeah, right, right. No, they're each taking turns. Yeah. And the narrator goes like, ah, hitchhiking. Yes. It seems fun until you get raped in the ass by a gay. Well, and again, he's not like hitchhiking's a bad idea. He's like, hitchhiking's a bad idea. Should you run into the wild homosexual? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, so, okay, so we're going to introduce our first case study, Jimmy Barnes, the naive hitchhiking boy. Yeah, he was just having a normal afternoon of getting into a fast-moving metal cage with a stranger, Mm -hmm. but normal kind, normal kind. It was fine at first. And this stranger seemed real friendly. Asked Jimmy if he could fit his mouth around a Coke can. Asked him how his school was. It was great. (laughs) Normal conversation with a... Heavy breathing man with aviator sunglasses and a Hitler mustache. Holy shit, this guy. (laughs) They might as well uh, put a hair on his palms and dressed him in nothing but a trench coat. (laughs) He is terrifying. (laughs) It is like Jeffrey Dahmer in a Groucho Marx mustache. Yeah, right. Yeah, yeah, exactly. It'll be fine. Also, is it just me or did we get a bizarre amount of detail about their baseball schedule during from the narrator. (laughs) 
He's the kids just like, yeah, we play every week against our rival gang of scalawags, the <laughs> Southside ethnic slurs. Yeah. Play against them. <laughs> they have a fresher. Gross. So. And then the narrator, they they pull up to the kid's house, and the narrator's like. And then, you know, the driver made the normal amount of physical contact for no reason as yeah. Jimmy left, and it was no problem at all. He says he gave him a friendly pet. You know, those totally normal friendly pets you give strange children. Yeah, yeah, exactly. But nothing happened that day. He says he just told uh, Jimmy, well, that was fun and everything, and I drive this way often. Maybe I can ride you against. I give you a ride again sometime. <laughs> this this is a molesting long con. Yep. Word yeah, be. exactly. Exactly. He likes to romance him a little. So the next day, Jimmy's walking home to the omnipresent soundtrack of Cialis commercial that follows him around. And the pedophile is there waiting for him in the passenger seat for some reason. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, if the guy's waiting in the passenger seat of his own car just to get a closer look at the park that he's next to just staring at kids. Maybe don't get in the car. Yeah, that would help. <laughs> or where, regardless of where he's sitting, let me be more clear. Don't get in the car. Yeah. yeah. Well, as we learned from this film, the problem was that in 1961, children were cartoon mice and pedophiles were just like big pies. They just wafted through the air. Towards them. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah. And the way they're describing it in 1961, apparently every town has a few of these guys and they're just like, ah, you scamp. And like parents don't really care. They're just like, come on. as You guys as you didn't get in the car with this, Ralph the pedophile, did you? No, nah, it's, it's, it's Boo Radley and Dolphus Raymond. They, it's, it's fine. <laughs> they, they turn out to be good guys. All right. So Read a book. Jimmy gets another ride with Ralph, the, the homosexual. But this time, Ralph buys him a Coke and tells him some body jokes. <laughs> And then they have a little, like, a little falling in love montage, right? Where they go fishing and they have a picnic and they look at pornographic pictures together. Okay, this is just dating. Like, well, I'm assuming this child is a minor, so no, but but it's absolutely just dating so far. Yep. And okay, here's an actual quote from this is where we get the turn, right? The narrator says, what Jimmy didn't know is that Ralph was sick a sickness that was not visible like smallpox. Now, I'm not going to completely overlook the tsunami of bigotry in that, but I just, hey, anti-vaxxer, 60 years ago, that was the go-to example of visible sickness. Just want to throw that <laughs> out there, so worth noting. But yeah, then he goes on to say, you see, Ralph was a homosexual. Yeah, being gay is like invisible smallpox is what this movie is saying. Yep. Yeah. That's what they're saying. Well, the he even they, says yeah. that it's contagious. He uses the word contagious. Yep. Yeah. You, you know what? Being Christian is like audible smallpox if you talk. <laughs> <laughs> Fuck. Yeah. Fun fact about if if you catch gayness, you were. Yep. That's a fun fact about yeah. that. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Also, um, really quick, can we circle back to the uh, baseball cards of porn <laughs> that were presented <laughs> sure. to this child? Was that... A thick Oh yeah, no, they the, have, like the stats were awesome on those. <laughs> that stats on the back? Yeah, yeah. No, you had to collect them all. Yeah. The the Bazooka Joe bubblegum cartoons though, very upsetting. Let me tell you. <laughs> <laughs> Led the league in gay fucking in nineteen fifty eight. Look at that. All right. And then oh by the way, we get our definition of, of a homosexual at this point too. Here it is. Um noun. A person who demands an intimate relationship with members of their own sex. What do we say demands? Demand seems like a strong That's term. That's the word they used. Demands. <laughs> demands to fuck every person that they get near of their gender. It's like being a heterosexual man in 1961, except with other dudes. Yes, yeah, well, so, exactly, right. Downright right. immoral. Yeah, yeah, no, my original joke was, you know, like heterosexual people demand to have intimate relationships, and then I'm like, right, no, 1961, right. That probably Sorry. is yeah. the word. But yeah, but Ralph and Jimmy sure did have a lot of fun together, playing mini golf, getting presents, checking into CD motels, <laughs> apparently. That's fine. And this is where the narrator, the narrator lets us know that, like, Jimmy should have told his parents when they went mini golfing on their third date. And I was like, oh, is that? <laughs> <laughs> no, I was thinking like the first time he put you into his car as a yeah, stranger. Maybe. Yeah, that could have done it. 
maybe after the friendly Pat. No, he's cool. He was showing me the gay porn on the baseball cards, but also mini golf <laughs> a few times. Coke, Some free nice Coke. Fishing, a soda pop. <laughs> picturing him sitting in like a 1961 living room. Yeah, yeah, he showed you cards. And what else, son? Well, we went mini golfing. Son of a bitch, get away from my boy. <laughs> Well, but luckily for us, that's how it worked out. Jimmy told his parents before it was too late and Jimmy had caught the gay. And then it says Ralph was arrested and released on probation. Now, don't get me wrong. I, I know he showed him like pictures of boobs or something. That's probably not legal. And I'm I'm glad Ralph was was dissuaded. from. But what was he arrested for? Well, they said they said Jimmy was yes, released on probation. I was going to say that. Yeah. The kid was oh. released. Yeah. yeah, really? Ralph? So Ralph got prosecuted and Jimmy was released on probation for, you know, from the he was wearing those very provocative low top sneakers. So <laughs> it was probation for him. Wait, yeah. so uh, wait, DA cut him a deal for narking on the uh, the other perp. Are yeah. we supposed to think, though, then that, that they had gay sex and the kid was arrested for gay sex? Yeah, that's what I assumed. From oh, my world. fucking Jesus. This <laughs> is worse than I thought. How is this worse than I thought? <laughs> Sid feels worse than you thought. Sid, Sid Davis, please. Sid Davis. <laughs> <laughs> Sid Fields, too. But, then, <laughs> but the narrator warns us, though, that not all homosexuals are passive. Some of them don't even buy you a Coke. Okay, the term is bottom, Sid Davis. <laughs> the term is bottom. All right, so now we meet our second case study, Mike Merrick. And word of warning, his homosexual is violent. Yes. However, his homosexual is also dressed in a tuxedo. Yeah. With a bow tie. With a bow tie playing basketball with the kids. All right. So we, we watch these. Uh, we watch a bunch of kids play basketball in the sense that there are a bunch of kids in a basketball anyway. <laughs> They're all standing mm. directly under the hoop, shooting like upwards through the hoop itself. And missing. And yeah. missing. Um, okay. Were they even playing the competitive game of basketball, no. though? Okay, so in 1961, was there a game called cooperative basketball? Because <laughs> that's what they're clearly playing. If you told me that from, like, 1955 until 1972, white people thought basketball was, like, trying to get it stuck in the hoop so it stayed there, this we, scene We're going to need sense. all ten of us to, to all try yeah, the same right. thing to make yeah, this exactly. happen every once in a while. I, I swear this movie may have set the record for the most missed basketball shots in two minutes on film or otherwise, right? Like we watch because like <laughs> his friends leave and Mike sticks around and then the, the, the pedophile comes to play basketball with him. And we watch these two guys just miss shot after shot after shot. Not even hard ones, right? Yeah. And it's it's such a long take because of it, because it's obvious they were like, all right, let's see you make a few. But remember, you're playing a homosexual. So they miss 22 shots in a row, and then it just sort of fades out like, well, ran out of film and national budget. <laughs> they actually had to transition from trying to shoot. They were like, all right, well, this is going really badly. <laughs> you want to practice some crisp two-hand chest passing? Yeah, right, <laughs> yeah. Them just passing the ball from two feet away from each other for a little bit. I'm surprised they, they didn't miss that. Yeah, so then they, they wander off. Mike is going to catch a ride home with the pedophile. And then the narrator says, this is the actual line. The narrator says, Mike probably never realized until too late that he was riding in the shadow of death. <laughs> but he, he says it like he's trying to sneak it in on you. Mm -hmm. The narrator's like, turns out he was riding in the shadow of death. The car was very nice. It was a very nice car <laughs> that they got into. <laughs> Skipping right over. And the kid's just like, Lou, 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 riding in the shadow of death stuff. Yeah. It's, it's I just stuff. I just love that the narrator said the kid probably didn't realize this until it was too late. Like there was, he's holding out the possibility that the kid was into it, right? <laughs> kid gets in the car. God, I hope this kills me. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> 1961, it's going to fucking suck. <laughs> All right. So now we move on to yet another uh, test subject. I thought we were in for a double gaying, but we're not. So we meet Denny and Jerry, who are just innocently prepping their paper route. And apparently their pedophile has a whole con going, right? Like, because he has a whole thing where he pulls up and he's like, did you see those two boys on those bicycles? Those bicycles are stolen. Jump in the car and ride with me so that we can have a high speed chase or whatever. 
I need a boy for this arrest. <laughs> <laughs> Do you think the kids were in on it that were riding the bikes ahead? Are they part of the scam? Or does he just find two bikes? I feel like, him and then yeah, I feel like, because otherwise he already had two kids, right? So why would he use two kids to, to get one? If, if you're using fish to bait fish, you can just Maybe eat they were fish. his kids. Okay. All right. Yeah. Like it's the hills have eyes type situation. Yeah. Okay. Sure. Yeah. Yeah. Anyway, yeah, so this scam makes no fucking sense, but the kid gets in the car with him, so apparently it works, but his friend is a little too savvy for that. He's just savvy enough to write down the license plate number of the car, but not savvy <laughs> enough to say, hey, Denny, don't get in that fucking car. You're going to get raped to death. That's the advice he got from his parents. You hear him in his head. He's like, my parents told me my friend's getting in a car with a random dude. Always write down the license plate. <laughs> Don't stop your friend. No. Don't be a cock block. <laughs> Just make sure oh, we catch the murderer later with that license plate. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and, and by the way, after this all happens, Jerry just goes on his fucking paper route. He's like, well, if he gets murdered, right? That's a long damn job's a job. I got to earn that. Yeah, nickel. exactly. <laughs> I should probably tell Mrs. Henderson, but she's like, yeah, she's like 12th on the route. Yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll route. get her. I'll around. get her when I come around. Yeah, which is exactly what he does. He, he eventually delivers the paper to Denny's mom. And he's like, hey, did Denny ever show up with that pedophile and the stolen bike? And the mom's like, no, um, maybe we should. Call. But, and, and by the way, even mom is like weirdly fucking calm about this. Right. Oh, no, not another yeah. <laughs> pedophile. Just the other day, Jimmy followed a trail of pennies into the men's room. I, to, I know what to do. Oh, I've got the police on speed dial. Yes, officer, it's it's me. Yes, Denny again. I know. I know. What can I say? <laughs> Will you check for a soda, though? I could use a soda. <laughs> oh, yeah. But moral of the story, you only let random strangers take your friend if they have a license plate. <laughs> yeah, well, yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> All right, so now that you're terrified of the gays, you're probably wondering where they like to lurk. Well, luckily, this next scene has you covered. It's public restrooms, you see. <laughs> That's where you'll find the gays. They just love the toilets. What can I say? I guess, yeah. They're just hanging out on park benches all day. They got to shit at the public restroom. It's just part of the system. Yeah. yeah. Boy, I sure hope this doesn't pop up 60 years later as the impetus for the rampant bigotry from my mom's generation in the form of trans bathroom bills. Yeah, that's what I was going to point out. It's like uh, what they've done is they've translate like it's illegal to be gay and also social death. So people had to like hook up in bathrooms and to, oh, yeah, my buddy Frank, he keeps getting attacked in that same bathroom. Yeah, stall yeah, in the public exactly. park. I, yeah, right, right. Yeah, I tell exactly. him not to jog there. <laughs> <laughs> when you got to shit, you got to shit. So. All right, so yeah, but one of the kids, we we cut to these kids leaving a, a bathroom where apparently one of the gays was there watching them. So one kid decides that he's going to take a shortcut while his friends go the safe way, and wouldn't you know it, he's followed by the gay. Hey, fellas, I'm going to wrap myself in blankets and cinder blocks and go under the pier, okay? Yeah. I'll see you at the gas and sip. I love how the approach of the gay guy is scored by like this increasingly frantic taiko drum and shit. <laughs> he might as well have a fin. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I'm not sure that they didn't know that gay people had or had not a dorsal. Yeah, fin. That's yeah, fair. That's, anyway. that's, yeah, right, right. All right. So uh, and then, yeah, but luckily for us, Bobby saw the stranger following him through the shortcut and you know, thought better of it just before he was about to get murder raped. Mm -hmm. And then there's this odd fucking moment where we cut back to the narrator, who's still, by the way, driving out to give this seminar, thinking about how hitchhiking often leads to being gay raped to death. But then the narrator basically, this is almost a direct quote, basically says, the decision to not get murder raped is always yours. Yes. They, uh, just to be clear, my conclusion is if you get raped, it's your fault. 1961. Yep. You fucked up. You didn't see that fin? Come on. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. He says, and at the end, he's just like, just always be suspicious of everyone, especially if they're friendly. I'm like, boy, does that sum up the boomers? <laughs> yeah, it right? sure fucking does. Also, my favorite quote from this section, one never knows when the homosexual is about. <laughs> and I just wrote in my notes. I mean, not in my experience. I get it. <laughs> <laughs> 
gay guy just steps out of a tree. He's like completely the color of bark. Yeah, right. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Jesus fucking Christ. So yeah, yeah. This is um, this is where John McCain's generation comes from, guys. That's what I'm. I'm like, I'm not trying to say this is an, is an excuse or anything. I'm just. Like, this so is that what we can Uncle Joe watched in yeah, high school right. gym class. Leave him alone. <laughs> Well, don't and, don't leave him alone. I mean, I'm like, yeah, no excuses or anything. Just so that you know. All right. Well, something tells me we haven't heard from the last from Sid Davis. I feel like scissors are a religious implement. So with the promise of more where that came from, we're going to wrap the mini for the night. Gentlemen, thanks again. <laughs> <laughs>